Monocular depth estimation or MDE is the task of training a neural network to determine depth information from just a single image. This is an exciting and challenging area of machine learning and computer vision because predicting a depth map requires the neural network to form a three-dimensional understanding from just a two-dimensional image. Good MDE models have many practical uses such as aiding the navigation and obstacle avoidance for robots, drones and autonomous vehicles. Uh, they can also be used in video and image editing softwares for background replacement, object removal and creating some 3D effects. And additionally, they are useful for AR and VR headsets to create an interactive immersive 3D space around the user. In this video, we will discuss a new model called the Depth Anything V2 and its precursor the Depth Anything V1. Depth Anything V2 has outperformed nearly all other models in the depth estimation task showing impressive results on some really tricky images. Welcome to Neural Breakdown, let's go deep with depth estimation. So to fully understand the depth anything algorithm, we have to first revisit the MIDAS paper from 2019. MIDAS trains a neural network for monocular depth estimation using a combination of different datasets containing labeled depth information. For instance, the Kitty dataset for autonomous driving provides outdoor images while the NYU depth V2 dataset offers indoor scenes. These datasets are typically collected using stereo cameras where two or more cameras are placed at a fixed distance to capture the same scene, allowing for depth information extraction as a post-processing step. The NYU Depth V2 dataset uses RGBD cameras or RGB depth cameras that also capture depth values along with pixel color values. Some datasets also utilize LiDAR projections where laser beams are projected to capture 3D information about a scene. These methods come with several problems. The amount of labeled data is quite limited due to the high operational costs of obtaining these datasets with these sensors. Additionally, the annotations can be quite noisy and low resolution. Stereo cameras also struggle under various lighting conditions and cannot reliably identify transparent or highly reflective surfaces. LiDAR is expensive and both LiDAR and RGBD cameras have limited range and generate low resolution sparse depth maps. Now, it would be amazing if we could use unlabeled images to train depth estimation models because we have an abundance of such images just available online. The major innovation proposed in the original Depth Anything paper from 2023 was the incorporation of these unlabeled dataset into the training pipeline. In the next section, we'll explore how exactly this was achieved. The original Depth Anything V1 model from 2023 is trained in a three-step process. Let's first get a high-level overview of the algorithm before diving deeper into each section individually. First, a neural network called the teacher model is trained for supervised depth estimation using a combination of multiple publicly available datasets. Once trained, step two begins where the teacher model annotates millions of unlabeled images to create a massive new dataset with pseudo depth labels. These labels are called pseudo because they are AI generated and may not represent the actual ground truth depth. In the final step, another neural network called the student network is trained on a combination of the original label datasets and also these new pseudo labeled datasets. Simply training a new network on labels annotated by another neural network won't really surpass the original model. So the student network's performance is always going to be limited by the teacher network's ability. And we'll soon discuss the innovative tricks used to generalize the student training so it learns to outperform the base teacher model. But first, let's zoom in on each part of this pipeline starting with the teacher model. The teacher model is initialized with a pre-trained Dino V2 encoder and then trained on the combined labeled dataset. Different datasets have different cutoffs for their depth values, so we first need to normalize it somehow to share the same output space. And to address this, the depths are first inverted into a disparity space and normalized between 0 and 1 for each depth map. 1 for the nearest pixel and 0 for the farthest. This way, all datasets share the same output space, allowing the model to predict disparity instead of absolute depth. 
Two loss functions are used to train these models, a scale shift invariant loss and a gradient matching loss. And both are also utilized in the original Midas paper from 2019. Let's say the ground truth depth values of three pixels in the image are 1.5 and 0.1, while our network predicts 0 0.9, 0 0.6, and 0.3. Although the predictions aren't exact, the relationship between the predicted and the ground truth depths is quite similar. They are only differing by a multiplicative and additive factor. We don't want the scale and shift to affect our loss function. We first need to align the two maps before applying the mean square error loss. The Midas paper proposes normalizing the ground truth and their predicted depths to have zero translation and unit scale. The median and deviation of these maps are calculated and the depth maps are scaled and shifted accordingly before applying the mean square error loss. The second loss is the gradient matching loss. Using only SSI might result in smoothed out depth maps that fail to capture the sharp distinction between adjacent pixels of different objects. Gradient matching loss helps to preserve these details by aligning the gradients of the predicted depth map with those of the ground truth. First, we will calculate the gradient of both of the maps across the X and the Y axis, and then apply the L1 or L2 loss at the gradient level. Midas also uses a multi-scale gradient matching loss with four scale levels. The predicted and ground through depth maps are basically downsampled four times, resulting in four different uh, lower resolution depth maps. And the loss is calculated and added at each of these resolutions. The final loss is the weighted sum of the scale and shift invariant loss and the multi-scale gradient matching loss. While the SSI loss encourages the model to learn general relative depth relationships, the gradient matching loss helps preserve sharp edges and fine-grained information in the image. And now, with our trained teacher model, we can annotate millions of unlabeled images to create a massive pseudo-depth label dataset. And next, we will explore how to use this dataset to train a student network to actually surpass the original teacher model. If you are enjoying this video so far, all you need to do to support it is to just hit that like button right now and subscribe to the channel. That's all I'm asking. If you have any questions about anything discussed in the video or if you have a comment, please let me know below. And you can also support us through memberships on YouTube and on Patreon. I'll be uploading all the slides, animation, write-ups and annotated PDFs for this video. So do check out our Patreon page. Thank you. You are magnificent. Let's get back to the video. So to improve the student network's performance over the teacher network, we need to make the training objective of the student more challenging and more general than just depth estimation. Two strategies were employed to do this, heavy perturbations with image augmentations and introducing an auxiliary semantic preservation loss. For heavy perturbations, the goal is to distort and augment the training images so that the student model can learn to generalize better. One interesting perturbation used was the cut-mix operation. This involves combining a random pair of unlabeled images using a binary rectangular mask, replacing this rectangular portion of image A with image B. Secondly, the network is also trained with an auxiliary task called semantic assisted perception. A strong pre-trained computer vision model like the Dino V2, which has been trained on millions of images in a self-supervised manner, is used. Given an image, we aim to reduce the cosine distance between the embeddings produced by our new student model and the pre-trained Dino V2 encoder. This enables our student model to capture some of the semantic perception capabilities of the larger and more general Dino V2 encoder, which it uses to then predict the depth map. By combining the spatial distortions and the semantic assisted perception, the power of both labeled and unlabeled datasets, the student network generalizes better and begins to outperform the original teacher network in depth estimation. And here are some incredible results from the Depth Anything V1 model. As anything as Depth Anything V1's results are, it struggles with transparent objects and capturing fine level details. The authors of Depth Anything V2 suggest that the biggest bottleneck for this model performance is not the architecture itself, but the quality of the training data. Most labeled dataset captured with sensors can be quite noisy, ignoring fine grain details, generating low resolution depth maps, and struggling with lighting conditions and reflective or transparent objects. Depth Anything V2 
therefore proposes to discard all real world label data sets that are coming from sensors like stereo cameras, RGBD cameras or LiDAR and instead only use synthetic data sets. Synthetic data sets are generated through graphics engines and not captured using any equipment. An example of this is the virtual kitty data set which uses the Unity game engine to create rendered images and depth maps for automated driving. In the pro section they are super accurate, they have high resolution output that capture the finest of the details and the depth of transparent and reflective surfaces can be easily obtained. Synthetic datasets have direct access to all of the 3D information in the scene because the graphics engine creates it within itself. On the con side, however, these images may not essentially capture the images that we will encounter in the real world scenarios. And this is a type of distribution shift where the data you see during training might not match the data that you're going to see out in the real world during inference. And that can cause neural networks to perform great on a training set, but actually perform worse when you use it for a real world task. Depth Anything V2 combines the power of synthetic images with the millions of unlabeled images to train a MDE model that outperforms pretty much everything else we have seen so far. Much like V1, the teacher model in V2 is first trained on the labeled datasets. However, in V2, it is exclusively trained on synthetic datasets and no real world sensor datasets. In step two, the teacher model, as usual, assigns pseudo depth to all of our unlabeled images to create a new dataset. And finally, in step three, the student model is trained exclusively on these pseudo labeled images no real label datasets and no synthetic datasets. The synthetic datasets are omitted while training the student network to avoid the distribution shift problem that we mentioned earlier. And that way the student network never actually sees a synthetic image directly and only sees the real world images annotated by the teacher model. So those are the main takeaways from Depth Anything and Depth Anything V2. The original Depth Anything model emphasized the importance of using the unlabeled images in the MDE training pipeline. It introduced this knowledge distillation pipeline with teacher training, pseudo labeling, and then training the student network on a combination of labeled and unlabeled images. Depth Anything V2 improves upon the performance of Depth Anything V1 by outright ignoring those real world sensor data set and only uses synthetic computer generated images. With these techniques, Depth Anything V2 can now predict fine level depth maps and can handle transparent and reflective surfaces more effectively. Thanks for watching. You're magnificent. Please don't forget to subscribe. Goodbye.